Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got a really nice, very unusual card to show you today. I'm calling it the reverse, uh, reverse fold, which it is, but I'm going to call it a hanging reverse fold card or something like that anyway. Um, it's an origami fold. Basically I've got this beautiful box that I've done. I've made this bow, pop ribbon around it and it's all reinforced. And basically you lift this off and you have this piece inside and then as you lift it out, this rather large reverse origami fold card. Now, the idea is to have this hanging. Obviously, it's special, so you could have this personalized with a, you know, a 21st birthday, 50th birthday, any any of those milestones. You could change it completely and have it as a wedding card. Um, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do for this. So I am, uh, the person I'm giving this to, I don't want to say, but I have put at the bottom there, you're still a spring chicken. Um, and it's going to be more personalised, but again, for now, that's how I've done it. And the reason that it's called a reverse fold is when you fold it in, you can see, if I pop it back in the box like so, you've got this piece goes in that way, and then the bit on the back here goes that way. So it's reversed each time. So this one's that side, that folds that side, this folds this side and it just perfectly falls down. Now what I've also done is I've done a chipboard top and bottom. So you've got the weight, so straight away it just falls into that shape. And I've also finished it at the bottom there with one of those corner protectors, just in case whoever's hanging it, it may be touching the floor, so that's gonna stop the bottom of the card getting ruined. And you can see on the back there, that's that chipboard base. Now you could also decorate the back, but because this is gonna be hanging, there just didn't seem to be a need for it, but it, it perfectly folds like so. Now you could wrap ribbon around that, you don't have to have the box. The box on its own is just a really nice tutorial because that's, that's really, really pretty, that box. So everything matches. I'll go through all the papers and stuff in a minute, but I just love that when whoever gets this will know straight away to pull that tab because it's just naturally what you're going to do. And it just it just appears in front of them and it is just, I love it, absolutely adore it. I think it's wicked. So I hope you enjoy it too. And uh, let's get into the tutorial. So you do need lots of bits and pieces, but that's what makes it such a nice card. Now the papers I'm using are from Rosie's Studio, which I have very recently come across. Um, I believe she's from New Zealand. The company's from New Zealand. I found these in a craft store um, locally and um, I will try and find links and share what I can with you but she does awesome stuff it is just yeah it's brilliant I absolutely adore it there's nothing yet that I've seen that I don't like so this is one of the 12 by 12 packs that I picked up which is wildflower and I'm using matching um, embellishments and stuff to match but of course you can make this with any any papers that you've got um, but just give you a quick overview there You've got these gorgeous, that one's really nice. You've got foiled ones in here. This is, I'm gonna be using one of these ones today. That's the one I used on that gift box I've just showed you. That will make a beautiful gift bag, which I might end up making for that one. So it might be a gift box in a gift bag. <laughs> um, loving, just nice foiled one there. Um, that was the green that I used. Um, that one's really nice, I love that. That's those embroidery rings or hoops. I think that's a lovely style and yes yeah, so you get four of each so just the room then repeats it again um, but yeah really really nice so that's what I'm going to be using okay so first of all let me just grab my support board oh right so you're going to need seven pieces of eight by eight two of those will be for your box so pop two to one side and the other five are going to be to make the card itself so we'll get into that first of all. So what you want to do, now it's an origami fold, but because I'm using a thicker card, I'm gonna use the scoreboard, okay? So um, if you just Google reverse origami reverse fold, you will see how to fold it. Um, and again, I'm always looking for my stylus, always. It seems to just disappear from here, and then I end up having to find another one. So there we go, I'll use this one. So basically what you want to do is along one of the eight inch sides is you want to score at four and then rotate and score again at four. Then pop it on the diagonal so it's in a diamond shape and I'm just using my six inch guide here so I'm popping the top there in the six inch track 
and the bottom in the six inch track. Now what I've done on my scoreboard is I've just marked a little black marker pen there at six inches. Okay, if you need to use a ruler then do so. But just make sure that you've got it completely straight, like so. Don't start from the point because you run, run the risk of damaging it. So I always start from the middle and go out and then the middle and go out. Okay, and then you can kind of go over it if you need to. So that is the same folds that you will get with the origami reverse fold, but I'm using the scoreboard. Now you want to do that on all of those other four pieces. So you're just doing this on the five, because remember those other two are for your box. So just completely put them to one side, again, so you don't accidentally <laughs> go ahead and, and score it. So I'm just gonna carry on and score mine. Okay, so there is all my five pieces done. So get rid of your scoreboard. You'll need it again later on when we do the box, but I've got some way yet before we get to that point. So. Now with every one you just want to go, ahe go ahead now and fold all of those score lines and burnish them. Again I'm driving myself insane, where is my stuff? Oh my gosh, where is my score? My uh, bone folder. Again, going to have to use another one. Okay, so fold, uh, what am I doing that way? Fold it in half, like so. Make sure when you do your diagonal fold that you're getting really nice points at each end and then do your square folds there. Again make sure it all lies nicely. Okay so you can see all of them burnished there, just do that on all of the other pieces. Okay so there is all my burnished five sheets. Okay now what we want to do is you're going to be sticking them down each one differently to create again the, the reverse folding when it all kind of um, it's like a concertina fold in a way because it all kind of gathers down together. So what you want to do, pick one. This is going to be my very first one. This is my top one that we're going to have the little ribbon attached to that we're going to pull out. Now the next one, you want to flip it over and you're going to stick it. So this is the top. You're going to stick it down in the opposite um, square. So you're not sticking, you're never sticking in the squares where we've got those diagonal score lines through, okay? You're only sticking in the plain squares, so you always know you're doing it right. So this one is gonna go down in there, like so. So just go ahead and get that one stuck down first. I'm just using my um, Tombow glue here. I'm just gonna splodge that in there, and then I can spread it all out with my bone folder. So just line it up within the score lines there. Make sure it's all nice and even. Flip it over. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure it's all spread out. Like so. Okay, so we've got that one at the minute. Then the next one, you're going to stick this way up again. So that one we revert, we folded over. This one you're going to keep the same way up as the first one. And again, you're going to stick it down into that. I guess when you're looking at it this way, it's bottom right hand side. But it's always that next plain square that's opposite the square you've just stuck down. So again, I'm going to keep putting the glue on this bit, I think. Okay, so make sure it's obviously up the right way. And this is going to mean that you won't get any cracking, because you're already sticking it down in the direction that it's going to be folding when it goes into the gift box. If you just stuck them all down the right way, you get a lot of cracking and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we've got this one's facing up this way, this one's facing down, and then this one is facing up again. So then the next one we get, you're gonna turn it over. Okay, so it's facing down. And again, we're gonna stick it into this one. Okay, stick it down again. It's just these little tricks by sticking things the right way or burnishing them the right way and scoring them the right way that will make your overall paper craft projects, you know, more finished, neater, less cracking, all those little things, so it's, um, it's good to do it. Okay, and then the last one is going to face up. All right, so just pop that one. Okay, so they are all stuck down nicely. So the very top, the very bottom, all right? So now, with that in mind, you want to bring in these two sides, okay, like so and squash them down like that. Okay, so again, 
you're just bringing them in like so because we've burned it fold, folded it scored it right and stuck it down the right way that will all comfortably want to go in that direction now the next one if you flip over you're going to do the same so bring it up and fold it in and this time you've got that one that you just done before on top and again just go around and burnish and flip it over again bring those two up like so and then flip it over and again like so and then the last one is going to sit on the top like that and you should have it all perfectly in that square format it shouldn't be anything going over flopping you know kind of starting to go over to one side it should all should have a bit of a bounce to it because it will do and then as we lift it up you get your card and it each is folding if I put it on that angle you can see the reverse folding each time a really simple fold but it turns into something really really fun so that's the hardest part done okay so leave that to one side now we're going to move on to the two chipboard pieces so we're going to stick one on the top and one on the bottom this is optional but I do think it does make a difference when it's hanging because you have the weight um, and it just also gives it a more finished look as well so basically what you need is two pieces of chipboard which measure uh, this one is so three and seven eighths of an inch squared, two pieces. And the chipboard, when I this is one mil, and this is just from the backs of my 12 by 12 paper packs, or eight by eight, or even your six by six ones. If you don't have this, as I've mentioned before, if you've got any cereal boxes or the top card from your 12 by 12 paper packs, if you stick two of those together, it will give you the same effect. All right. And even if you don't have two, one will be okay. It's just that you just want something that's going to give you a bit of weight. Then to wrap around that, so to cover it, I've got two pieces of five by five, okay? So what you want to do is just cover your chipboard. I'm not going too, I'm not too, too worried. Um, oh, splodging it too much there, just as long as it's roughly covered. And then you want to sit it in the middle again, don't be too precious it's just so you've got enough overhang on each side just spread out and make sure that glue is covered do that on the other piece okay and I'll just go over the top side as well again just making sure there's no air bubbles or any lumps or anything like so then just go around each side just folding like so okay and then we just want to cut our corners so you just want to cut across just slightly above the end of the, the corner of the chipboard there about uh, one eighth of an inch a couple of millimeters whatever just you want a little bit you can see that's better there see I've got a little bit I haven't gone right up to the chipboard so again if I just do it here you just want to cut like that and that one and so do that on both pieces and then I'm going to use my other glue just because I'm running out of that and this one's just as good. So I'm just going to run glue just like so. Kind of make sure you get a nice bit among, between the chipboard and the paper there so right in that kind of bit there um, and then just fold it over and with your bone folder just really make sure it's wrapped around really tight really taut and then that glue starts to splodge out which is fine and it's better to do this glue with this bit because this glue dries clear and doesn't stay tacky whereas the Tombow does and you just end up getting it everywhere and then where you've got that little bit overhanging just with your bone folder just kind of work it in corners there okay and then I'm going to go to the opposite side 
And again, just squeeze my glue in there, fold it around and stick it down and do that on all of your sides on both of your pieces. Okay, so there's my two nice chipboard tops and bottoms. So before we stick them down, I'm going to do all the inside. So that's for my lid. Let me just make sure I'm getting all the right pieces. And that's all for my lid. Okay, so to decorate all of us, so just leave your chipboard to one side for one minute. Bring in your card again, open it up. So what we're going to do is I have got my patterned floral pieces are going to be for the all of these triangle pieces, so all your side ones. Then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six squares, just plain squares going all the way down, and they were the ones that we stuck. To go over those, I've got these pieces here. So you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, six pieces of, uh, what am I on here, three and a half by three and a half. And they will sit perfectly in those squares, giving you a nice quarter of an inch border. So you need six pieces. Then you need two, four, six, eight, yeah, ten. Ten pieces of uh, three and a quarter inch squared. Okay? Now those ten pieces, you then need to cut in half. So grab my trimmer. And bouncing all over the place. See, it needs to be weighted down. Grab one of them, pop them on the diagonal, point to point in your track, and just as I always say, whenever you're cutting anything with a point, go into the middle first, then go out, come back in again, go out, and then you don't pucker your edges, and you want to make triangles like this. So you will then end up having 20 of these. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of those cut. Okay, so I now have my 20 triangles. So now you need to stick everything down. So open it all up. I pop them all over there. Open it all up. Flatten out, it's not going to harm it. And maybe go ahead and stick your plain ones down first. Well, I say plain, but you know, the as in the plain square area. I want to make sure mine are all in the right orientation. So they are going to go like so, all the way down like that. <laughs> Obviously you don't even have to have it this long, I've just thought this was a good length. Um, and then these are going to go in every single triangle like so, again giving you that same border. So just go and get that now all stuck down. Okay, so mine are all stuck down. You can see there it looks really, really cool. And then it should again just all fold don't really need to do much to it, it'll do it itself. Now we're going to stick down our chipboard pieces. So this is my tops, this is my front. So flip it over, I'm going to do the back first. I've also got one of my little um, uh, corner protectors. This one is 18 millimetres long and 4 millimetres wide. Okay, that's how they kind of break them down when you go to look them up. Um, this is probably my favourite size, it works with, with pretty much everything. So. Right, got my bit of chipboard, so I'm going to pop some hot glue on the back of this. Just enough to stick it down. And then when you stick it on here, you should have a very, very tiny bit of white. Very tiny. Now the reason I'm not putting that on the chipboard first and then sticking it down is the bulk of that metal on that one corner will mean that your chipboard will not lie nice and flat over your the, the actual card itself. So it's best to do this and then we're going to attach it over the white bit of card there. Okay. So now that's our weight on the bottom of our card and when you open it you don't want to be able to see it. Okay. So that's why I said you've got a very very thin white kind of border so that when you flip it over. So then on this side is where we're going to stick that but for the minute I'm now going to stick this one down. Now before we stick this one down we want to make our little hook so I have this yellow, nice thick ribbon here, and I'm gonna just do that. So keep it straight, thumbs both on top, keep your thumbs on the top, and bring it around to you to create that shape there. It's entirely up to you how big you want it to be. This one's gonna be a bit bigger because it's a bigger um, piece of ribbon, so I'm just splodging some hot glue there, 
bringing that across like so and just make sure that all sticks nicely. Now I want it so that it faces that way when it's open okay so you're going to stick it on here upside down okay so I'm going to cut a little bit of the bulk off there actually so let's just just remove some of that bulk and then I'm going to splodge some hot glue on the front there flick it over and then you've got a little bit of wiggle room with the hot glue just to make sure that you've got it nice and straight and even okay so that's now all stuck down and then again you want to stick that over the top again with that little white border so I'm just going along hopefully my glue gun is not going to run out of glue just I think I can get away with that let's go for it again making sure that you've got nothing overhanging there when you lift it over that way okay it just gives you a nice like I said a finished look and it gives you that weight more so on the bottom so that is now how it should all be looking go back to the bottom again and this very very last point is where we're going to stick this so you're going to have it facing up to you because you want the nice side obviously being what's shown first so the back side is going to be on there flip the whole thing over like so I've just got some tissue here my husband's hammer <laughs> and just pop that in there make sure it's butted right up into the corner and kind of push it in that direction when you lay the tissue over just turn that off move that out of the way and then you just want to just check that's it so you see now that's nice and finished there and then if we flip this all over <laughs> so it's all folded down you will have that nice bottom so now if you hold it I mean you can't see now when I do that but now when I hang that it's got a really nice weight to it and I still haven't you know personalized it or put any embellishments and things like that on it so I will do a few bits of that in a minute but now we will move on to the box okay so you'll need your scoreboard again and those two pieces of eight by eight so choose which one's your your lid and your base so I'm going to start off first of all with the lid all right so you've got your eight by eight side and what you want to do first of all is score at seven eighths of an inch on all four sides okay so seven eighths of an inch like so now this is a reinforced lid so what you want to do next is just pull it out so it's just coming up to the one eighth of an inch marker not quite it's kind of in between if I bring that up there it's just there it is right in the corner I'm just pulling it out just so you can see a little bit of the scoreboard there literally a couple of millimeters all right when you pull it out you then want to score Oh, get the right end there at one and seven eighths of an inch and six and a quarter then rotate it pop it in the corner and then pull it out again the same and again one and seven eighths of an inch and six and a quarter and by us pulling it out of the little bit it allows it to slip over the base and because it's reinforced you need that extra room so that's our lid, pop that to one side, and then your base is that other piece of eight by eight, and you're just gonna score at one and seven eighths of an inch on all four sides. So this isn't reinforced, but we're gonna be adding card onto it, which will make it nice and strong. Okay, one and seven eighths of an inch, all four sides. So now that is everything scored. So we'll stick with our base for the minute. You just wanna go along now and just burnish all of those score lines making sure everything's nice and straight okay that's the base burnished and while you've got your bone folder there do your lid as well so just burnish all of those score lines okay so now I've got the lid I'm going to stick with this so grab some scissors you will have four squares in each of your corners and this is just like any other reinforced lid that I do so you're going to cut up both of those score lines so I'm going past the first score line and to the second one. 
So now I've got those two pieces. And rotate it round and remove those two completely and then remove just that top one. So you're left with that. And then just tidy it all up. You're going to take a little wedge off of the two outer sides there and then wedge off of the actual little square there that's flapping because that has become our tab now. Okay, so if I just lay that down, that is what you should have. So we'll go along to this side now and do exactly the same. So cut down both of those score lines, pass the first score line down to the second score line. Rotate it round, remove those two completely. While I'm here, I'm just going to take that wedge away. Remove that whole piece. Take a little wedge off of there. And then tidy up that square by taking a little wedge off of each side. So again, if I lay that down, and you can pause, that is what you want to have. Then you want to rotate the whole thing around and you're going to do exactly the same again. Okay, so that's now what you should have. Then we need to stick everything down. So I'm just using my glue and you're going to go around and stick all the tabs first. So just pop a splodge of glue, bring it down and bring the other side around like so. And stick that down. Okay, so then go around to the next one, pop a bit of glue on it. You don't need to go crazy with glue because you're going to be covering this tab. It's really just to kind of get it in place because we're then going to fold these larger pieces over the top which is really going to secure it. And then you'll be left with those two. So do these at the same time so you can fold them both in together. And just stick that one and that one. Okay. So then you should have your lid forming and you've got these large four sides, these larger tabs. Just kind of fold them out a little bit, so be careful you don't want to crack your card. And then just put some more glue all the way around. Again, I'm not putting too much because you can, you're going to use your bone folder in a minute to, and that will spread all the glue out. And then just fold one over, pop it on its side and with your bone folder I can see now the glue kind of coming out, so it's all spreading out nicely. And go around to the next one, fold it in, use your bone folder, and this will give you a nice crisp side. I must sound like a broken record when I do these with people that watch me all the time because I say the same thing, but I'm always aware that there's new people watching. So yes, once you learn how to do a reinforced box, they are very easy to do. And it's a good thing to learn. It's like a, st a staple, I would say, within card making. So now we have this nice lid, okay? Like so. To decorate the top of the lid, you need two pieces of your pattern paper. So I've got the same matching. So my first piece is four and a quarter squared, and that's going to go right on the top with a very, very small white border. And this piece is going to layer on top of that. And this is three and seven eighths of an inch all the way around. And that's going to sit in the middle there with a nice equal border. So go ahead, get them cut and get them stuck down. I'll do mine in a minute. Then your base, grab your scissors and you're just going to cut up any side to that first score line. Then go across to the next one and cut down. And this is a non-reinforced, so the difference is you just have one square in each corner, whereas with a reinforced you have four. So you're going to just then fold, fold this in exactly the same way. So just cut down those four like so. And now I'm just going to add glue, which is just running out again. I swear I run out in every project I do. I'm going to put a bit more glue on because this is the only piece. So just make, focus on the, the um, outer parts, I would say. And just fold that one down and bring it up like so. Oh, I know what I did forget to do. Fortunately, that one is okay. Take a little wedge off. <laughs> all, the, all that does, it's more for the outer one. So this side here, because if you take that wedge off, when you fold that in, you don't get anything overhanging. See now, that just line lies nice and flush. So that's really what it's for. I mean, I always just do both, just so you don't get any of it kind of catching on the base as well. So yeah, just take a little wedge off of each one. So get them all glued down and all stuck inside. Okay, so then what you want to do is grab your lid and just check that it all sits over nicely and you should have a nice flush box 
you can see there, I've got a nice like, I always say you can feel the air coming out when you open and close it and that's what you want, you've got a nice, nice closure. So I need to stick that on the top still, which I'll do in a minute. And then for the decorate the sides of the box, you are going to need four pieces of four by uh, one and three quarters. So four pieces and then four pieces to go on top of that, which are three and five eighths of an inch by one and three eighths of an inch. And again, they're going to stick over the top like so and each one is then going to go on the side of your box I like that so go ahead and get all of that stuck down okay so that is the box now all decorated so it's become much stronger now on the sides here and then that sits nicely over the top now you can add more paper here on these sides if you wanted to but I've added ribbon which is what I've done on this one here and I just think it looks really nice and I love that ribbon little bit there so I'm going to show you how to do that now I haven't got that same width that's half an inch ribbon which is ideal for this I've got here I think it's about three eighths of an inch but it's still going to work nicely there on the sides so you just want to decide what's your front and your back I guess so take that off um, I'm not too too bothered here so I'm going to start here this is going to be the back you need your hot glue on and just pop first of all just a little bit and get that kind of laid down. Actually, sorry, this is going to be the front because we're going to be covering this join with the bow. So apologies. So just get it nice and centered there so you've got equal white on the top and the bottom. And then just do it bit by bit. So I'm just going to run a bead of my hot glue just to the end there and then lie the ribbon down. Just carefully, just spread that glue out. This is a velvet ribbon, so it's quite thick. So and I can kind of handle the heat of the glue and then again kind of working my way I'll go halfway there just so the glue doesn't dry and again just keeping it nice and straight and even and just work your way around till you get back to that front again okay so I've just gone right there and then I'm just going to cut that just where it joins don't worry if it doesn't overlap so much because you are going to cover that up now okay so it doesn't look too nice now but don't worry but there and again just pop it on your box just to make sure you can see how lovely that's going to look then just with some more ribbon so I can use this here you need to decide how big you want your bottom kind of loops to be so let me do this one first and then I will tell you how much ribbon you'll need. So this piece here you will need, which will be for the first kind of one, is six inches long. Okay, Turn it over and you try and bring equal sides in to the middle and pop a little bit of glue. So I'm just going to pop a bead of glue right in the middle and then bring one bit over like so. Then pop another bead of glue and bring the other one over. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to grab my next piece and I want this to be, because that was six, so this piece I'm going to cut to four inches. Like so. And again, do the same, pop a bead of glue in the middle. Bring one side over. Okay, so you'll have the join on the backs, turn them both over, pop a bead of glue on the big one, and then pop that one over the top, like so. Pull off any little bits of glue strings that you might have, and then you want to wrap it in the middle so I'm going to cut a piece here which is, you'll probably trim it again, two and a half, that'll be fine, it's probably too much. Again put a little bead now on top and sit that nice and even. Okay. And what I'm going to do is put a little embellishment there as well. I didn't do it on the other one, I forgot, but I am going to. And then put some glue there, bring that one round. And then you can trim some of this now. So still cut it to two and a half because it's good to have that little bit of kind of movement and then pop another bead of glue and bring the other one don't bring it right round you don't want to see this from the other side so I'm going to cut it 
see there I've cut it more into the middle rather than on the actual edge just get rid of all of those strings they're all stuck to my fingers okay like so and then I've just got some of these nice pearl um, little embellishments I'm just going to take off one there and I'm actually going to pop some hot glue because this is going on to velvet tiniest little bead there and just sit that in the middle and it will stick much better than the the, the actual sticky backing that they put on them so now you will have oh they're driving me insane get rid of all these strings oh, this little kind of bow and then you're going to stick that over your piece there so I'm going to pop just a little bit of a bigger bead there hold it up so you can make sure you're getting it in the centre make sure you've got equal distance there and just squeeze that in place so there you have it they look like two normal gift boxes but when you open it up and you pull this out you have this amazing card to just hang I think whoever receives that will absolutely adore it because I think it's so unusual so different I haven't seen one my idea <laughs> and then there's that one there as well which I can't wait to personalise for the person I'm going to give it to. So there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have, please hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up as well. And I will be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.